Multiplying single digits? What am I supposed to do here? Oh, well, hey, welcome. Uh, I guess what they wanted me to do is explain how to do uh, multiplying single digits. So let me I'll give it a shot. Well, the um, way I was taught when multiplying digits uh, way back when is, you know, multiplying digits is just like addition. And it's just like repetition of addition. So there's a lot of ways we represent multiplication. And I wanted to write those up here uh, where you could say 2.3 is means 2 multiplied by 3. 2, when a number is then in parentheses, is the same thing as multiplication. Sometimes you write an x there. That's still multiplication. Um, sometimes we're just flat out saying 2 times 3. And other times we write this nice little funny figure. That also means multiplication. So now you guys know at least what the symbols are. What exactly is multiplication? Well, I think way back when I got a little sick. I'm tired of always writing 3 plus 3. So what I figured out was, how is there a way that we can kind of speed this up? And what we came across was, well, I have two sets of threes. So two sets of threes is what we call, you know, two multiplied by three. So two multiplied by three is the same thing as three plus three, which we know adds up to six. Then I started looking at, well, that's kind of curious because, you know what? What about if I was adding two plus two plus two? And therefore, I have three sets of two. And so the quick, quick way for us to add up two plus two plus two, which is saying, well, since I'm adding two up three times, I can say it's three times two, which ends up giving us six. And therefore, you know that two plus two plus two also equals six. Now, this brings me to an important point that I want to make a mention about multiplication. It doesn't matter if we multiply two times three or if we multiply three times two. Each way, we're still going to always get the exact same answer. Okay, so that's something very important for you to keep, keep remembering. Now, what exactly does this mean? Um, and how can we really apply this? So let me go over the first two answers, and then what I'll do is I'll kind of show you a different way in case you start getting into some addition or some multiplication problems that start getting a little bit too big. So first one, if I say, well, let's say I have two sets of one. Well, that could be two. I'm sorry. That would be one plus one. And what we notice is one plus one is equal to two. So therefore, or we could say, what is one set of two? Which would just be two. And therefore, what you notice is two or any number times one is always going to equal that number back. So 2 times 1 simply equals 2. Now, what about if we get to 0, right? So therefore, I could have 0 sets of 3 or 3 sets of 0. So I'd have 0 plus 0 plus 0. And I can't 0 represent 3, so I can't really do that. But I can do 0 plus 0 plus 0 three times. And we know that 0 plus 0 plus 0 is always going to equal 0. So this brings me to my next important point. Any number multiplied by zero is always going to equal zero. Okay? Now, I have four plus three. I told you guys that is the same thing as multiplying three add, or three um, by itself, you know, or sorry, adding up three four separate times. But let's kind of look at this a different way. I want to show you guys another way to look at your multiplication. Let's say I have something and I'm going to have four this way. So I have four units. All right. Then I have three sections going the other way. So what, I meant, what this represents is the same thing as me doing three plus three plus three plus three, or we could do three sets of four, which would be four plus four plus four. Now, if you get kind of sick of writing this out and you still want a way to visually represent multiplication, you can represent a rectangle and say, well, four would be on one side, so you break it up evenly into four, and then you can break the top up to three. And therefore, I can count them all up and say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Therefore, four times three equals twelve, which you can also represent if you would have added these on the bottom. Now, eight times nine is going to get a little bit big, all right? And the best um, way for you know a lot of us to remi remember is to actually just simply keep on 
practicing over and over, remember your times tables because you'll start to using them so often that it's really not worth your time to always have to draw a diagram or to keep on adding up eight sets of nine or add up nine sets of eight, okay? So it's really important that you guys get really good at memorizing that. Now, the ones that I like to always look at, what can I memorize first, is always trying to remember numbers by itself. And one way I can just show you this is, you know, nine times nine is, or I'm sorry, eight times eight gives me 64. Okay? And if I, what I was going to do, if I'm going to add up, if I'm saying times nine, what that's saying is, well, this is eight sets of eight, right? This is eight times eight. So if I'm going to add one more, one more set of eight, which would be multiplied by nine, I'm really going to say 64 plus 8, which equals 72. Now, if you're one of those that wants to check my work, feel free to draw a diagram and count up 64 squares. Okay? You can do it the other way. I don't really want to get to it, but the best way I'd have you guys do this is remember, try to practice over and over, at least, first of all, your, uh, your square numbers, the numbers multiplied by itself. Last one, I'll look at 7 times 7. Again, that's going to be 7 sets of 7. You can draw a box, or you can add 7 7 times. And what you'll end up getting is 49. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that's how you multiply single digits. I got to go because I got to multiply single digits.